How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many souls to glory <clears throat> behold <clears throat> the man upon a cross my sin <clears throat> Upon his shoulder, ashamed, I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. <clears throat> it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished, his dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. <clears throat> no gifts, no power, no wisdom. But I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Oh, yes, those deep, deep wounds <clears throat> beaten, I believe, more than any other person was and lived through it. I totally believe that with my whole heart because this was God's answer, wasn't it? Jesus, his only begotten son, sent to redeem us, and ooh, it made the devil mad. And so he threw everything that he had at him, but none of that was good enough. No, none of that. Jesus died on that cross <clears throat> for you and for me. How exciting. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God on September 27. On September 27, there's great encouragement in here as Isaiah proclaims to all of his people. <clears throat> Let me have another sip here before it all ends up growing cold. And then it's never quite as good when you put it in the microwave. We are reading from the chapter 51 of Yeshiahu, Isaiah. Isaiah 51. Listen to me. You who follow after my righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Is that you this morning? I know it is. It's me too. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord will comfort Zion, Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden. <clears throat> that is quite a statement. The wilderness like Eden. And we can only imagine how glorious Eden was. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Oh, the voice of melody, singing, sweet singing. 
Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, O my nation, for law will proceed from me, and I will make my justice rest as a light of the peoples. My righteousness is near, my salvation has gone forth, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands will wait upon me, and on my arm they will trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look on the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish away like smoke. The earth will grow old like a garment. We can understand that, can't we? And those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever. And my righteousness will not be abolished. Oh, there's good news. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, you people in whose heart is my law. Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their insults, for the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. There's always surprises in this word for me. Now, when have I read anything from the Bible to you that had the word moth? And yet, I had the fly sweater this morning chasing this moth around my kitchen. <laughs> I didn't get it either. It's still flying around somewhere. How about that? For the moth will eat them up like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake! Awake! Put on strength. You have to put it on, folks. You have to kind of gear it up like the boxers do when they get ready. Put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days. In the generations of old, are you not the arm that cut Rahab apart and wounded the serpent? Mm. Are you not the one who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep that made the depths of the sea a road? Remember that? They walked right on through on dry ground. And here is a beautiful reason for the redeemed to cross over, so the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The redeemed of the Lord shall come and come to Zion, with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads, they shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of a man who will die, and of the son of a man who will be made like grass? And you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. You have feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, when he has prepared to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hastens that he may be loosed that he should not die in the pit, and that his bread should not fail. But I am the Lord your God, who divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name, <clears throat> and I have put my words in your mouth. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand, 
that I may plant the heavenlies, lay the foundations of the earth, and say to Zion, you are my people. <clears throat> and that's what they're finding out coming home to Israel again in our generation, isn't it? Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, you, have, you who have drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. You have drunk the dregs of the cup of trembling and drained it out. There is no one to guide her. Among all the sons she has brought forth, nor is there any who takes her by the hand among the sons she has brought up. These two things have come to you. Who will be sorry for you? There's a good question. Who will be sorry for you? Desolation and destruction, famine and sword. By whom will I comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets like an antelope in a net. They are full of fury from the Lord, the rebuke of your God. Therefore, please hear this, you afflicted and drunk, but not with wine. Thus says the Lord, the Lord and your God, who pleads the cause of his people. See, I have taken out of your hand the cup of trembling, the dregs of the cup of my fury. You shall no longer drink it, but I will put into the hand of those who afflict you, who have said to you, lie down that we may walk over you. And you have laid your body like the ground and as the street for those who walk over. Awake, he says again, <laughs> awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down. O oh, Jerusalem, loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O oh, captive daughter of Zion. <clears throat> o oh, Zion, O oh, Zion, that put on good tidings, get thee up, be not afraid. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, get thee up, be not afraid. Yes, get up and don't be afraid. Awake, put on your strength. Okay, for thus says the Lord, you have sold yourself for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. For thus says the Lord God, Isaiah is proclaiming, my people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there, and then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says the Lord, and my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news, announcing peace proclaiming words of happiness for our God reigns. Yes, our God reigns, our God reigns. 
Yes, our God reigns. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye. When the Lord brings back Zion, break forth into joy. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Just as many were astonished at you, so his visage, visage was marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. And there we have God's word to say that Jesus was brutally beaten more than any other man. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths at him. For what had not been told them shall they see, and what they had not heard they shall consider. And we move right along to chapter 53 of Isaiah. Whoa, this is good. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Imagine that. They took that whip that had little hooks so that when they struck him on his back, the hooks went into his flesh and then when they pulled it back, it ripped long ribbons. Those are referred to as the stripes. And by his stripes, because he did that for you and for me, we can be healed. He purchased healing. He purchased it by what he suffered. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned, every one, to his own way. 
and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us, us all. <clears throat> he was oppressed and he was afflicted and yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers, shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of living for the transgressions of my people. <clears throat> he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Remember Joseph of Armathia, Armanathia came, put him in his own tomb. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, and yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Only Jesus could do that. Nobody else has done that for you or for me. Mm, it's fresh to read it, isn't it, again? It needs to be read often. We turn now to the New Testament, and we are enjoying Ephesians, the little epistle book, Ephesians chapter 5, chapter 5. Let me grab one more sip. <clears throat> oh, Paul is going to give you a good word. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon it, that it's fresh. For you today for wherever you are in your life whether you feel laden burdened weary discouraged or whether you feel filled with joy you've had wonderful things happen <clears throat> either way and anywhere in between listen to this ephesians 5 therefore be imitators of god as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication, let's just throw out that dangerous word that's running wild today. Young people thinking they can just have sex, do anything they want, they're in rebellion. Please, if you're in that position this morning, please listen to what God has for you. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. And here's another list. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking 
nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. You know, you run into some people, <clears throat> and you can see they'd like to be your friends, <clears throat> and everything within you is saying, this person is not going to be good for me. Well, do not be partakers with them, the Lord boldly and plainly says to you. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk, walk every day as children of light for the fruit of the Spirit. Now listen to this. Uh, this is like the peach that is ripe for eating. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Better take that one in. Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. And therefore, he says this, okay? Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. And he will see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the, the time. Oh, we, that's so important today. Everything wants to eat up all your time, doesn't it? We need to redeem the time because the days are evil. We need, like we're doing right here, redeeming this time to hear the Word of God, to open up the Bible and say, yeah, I've got a big list for today, but first, let's read the Word of God. Let's keep it first because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation. And you just look up that word dissipation. <clears throat> it's a fascinating word to look up. Dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God, <clears throat> and now we have little personal notes. Wives, you wives, including me, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And you just need to take that for what it says. And you just need to begin to do it. 
And if you don't have a husband who walks with the Lord, and maybe he's tough on you, just keep doing it. And I, I promise you, God will honor that for you. I don't know how long to tell you it will take, but he will honor that if you will take that paragraph right there and put it to practice in your life. Put it to practice. The Lord, he, you will feel yourself being drawn unto him. He will strengthen you. And now here, husbands, husbands, hello, husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. By this word. That he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That is what we are aiming for in our lives, y'all. That's what our, we are aiming for. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Connie is recalling something from 1974. Okay, I shall go back and read it, my sister. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. Wow, take that in. They ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Can you take that in today? I'm taking it in fresh and new. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two, two, shall become one flesh. One flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. And that, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, <laughs> is what we're after every day. Every day, a little bit here, a little bit there. Whoops, fell down here. Well, get up. Just get up. Try again. Just keep on keeping on. And I mean that as an encouragement, not, not as a heavy burden. Not at all, please. We make it a heavy burden many times. But give that burden over to him. Let it be light with you today. And just do something simple, like what's your husband's favorite meal or dessert or whatever? Well, then do that. Think of something. Think of something sweet to do. We move right along to Psalm 69. We have already begun reading it, so we will pick up with verse 19. 19, <clears throat> Psalm 69, 19. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all before you. I mean, can you imagine we're reading these words after we just read that whole list there about loving each other? You know, the Word of God just fits together no matter, no matter where you're reading. You know my reproach, Paul says, my shame and my dishonor. Oh, no, we're, we're, David said this. My adversaries are all before me. Reproach has broken my heart 
and I am full of heaviness. David was having a time of great depression. I looked for someone to take pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They also gave me gall for my food. Now here's a picture of the cross. Now we've switched to Jesus. David prophetically says this way back then. They also gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Let their table become a snare before them, David cries. And we know this is, this is mirroring, this is proclaiming prophetically what Jesus will do. Clear back then. Clear back then. And let their well-being be a trap. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and make their loins shake continually. Pour out your indignation upon them and let your wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their dwelling place be desolate. Let no one live in their tents. Can you imagine all this? You would think this would be a reject to be in the Word of God. These words, you would think God would have looked at this and said, Oh, we, I can't have that in my Word. Oh, yes, he does. For they persecute the ones you have struck, and they talk of the grief of those you have wounded. And iniquity, add it, add iniquity, to their iniquity, and let them not come into your righteousness. Can you imagine David saying all that? Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not written with the righteous. <clears throat> and when are we reading this? At a time when the Jewish people have just, they are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, okay? Rosh Hashanah. Either way, it said Rosh Hashanah. And this is a time when they afflict their souls, when they examine their souls. Ten days, ten days of all. When they are supposed to get honest with themselves before the Lord. We'll continue with David. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let your salvation, O God, Set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bull, which has horns and hooves. The humble shall see this and be glad. And you who seek God, your hearts shall live, for the Lord hears the poor and does not despise his prisoners. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moves in them, for God will save Zion, Zion and build the cities of Judah. Y'all, that's what's happening right in front of our eyes. The Jews are coming home more and more and more every day to their promised heritage land. And everything that moves in the sea around them moves and sees this. For God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah. They are now building in the desert because they need the room that they may dwell there and possess it. Also, the descendants of his servants shall inherit it, and those who love his name shall dwell in it. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Israel is an exciting place today. 
All right, let's wrap up today's wonderful reading. Oh my goodness, isn't this just rich and, and pure? I mean, the old just blends right on into the new and the new right on into this psalm and the psalm now right on into this proverb. <clears throat> Here's your little proverb for the day, 24, verse 7. Proverbs 24, verse 7. Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. Wow. That just kind of hangs in the air, doesn't it? Wisdom is too lofty for a fool. He does not open his mouth in the gate. And for the Jews in the Old Testament, particularly, the wise men met by the gate and discussed things and settled lots of things. <laughs> I have a wonderful Jewish friend. Some of you know him, his name is BJ. They used to tell me, wherever you find three Jews, you're gonna find four arguments. <laughs> and he could say that, because he's a Jew. Wherever you find three Jews, there's four arguments. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But listen, to start off prayer today, <clears throat> I thought perhaps all of us, where we are, listening, could recite the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> it just would really bless me to know that as I'm saying it out loud, you are too, so I won't go very fast. Let's begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Father God, we hold up Jerusalem. You have asked us to pray for her peace and it's such a joy for me to pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. <clears throat> Receive your peace today, precious city. Receive it from the Lord, that peace might just float like the very air up and down the streets, in and out of the homes and the shops and the synagogues and the churches. Please, Lord, let there be peace in Jerusalem. Let your right hand reach over her and protect her from all evil attempts. <clears throat> Let individuals be rescued from dangerous things. And Lord, all of those who might be flying in the air even right now, they've been picked up from someplace far, far off in the world and they have risked their faith to say, I'll get on the plane and I'll go back to the homeland. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'll go. And they are coming. And we ask, Lord, please <clears throat> open up doors for them. Make a way for them, each and every one of them. You have a plan for every single life. Father God, show them that plan. And Lord, all these little organizations in Israel, <clears throat> whose business and, and whose joy is to welcome them. Many have the, uh, the duties of going to the airport and welcoming them. <clears throat> Sometimes whole plane loads full of people from a distant place that have been praying and praying. They've been praying next year in Jerusalem. <clears throat> and now they are going to have their opportunity. 
<coughs> excuse me, how exciting, how very exciting. Thank you for that, Lord. Let each one find where their place is in Israel. We give you praise and glory, and Lord, we'd ask that you would help those <clears throat> who haven't been rescued yet, and some of them are in places where they are treated so badly. They are hated. <clears throat> they are mocked. Father God, hear their hearts of prayer, please. Hear them and rescue them. <clears throat> all for your own namesake. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We bless you today with our hearts, with our voices, with our hands, with our worship. We give you praise and glory. And Lord, we are asking that there be a great revival come to America. A great revival, Lord, is what is needed. From Washington, D.C., to the very smallest of villages in America. And in every nation, every nation of the earth. If you are from another place, pray, please, for your nation, for your leadership. Maybe you have leadership that is very troubling. Pray for them. Pray that they might come to know the Lord personally in their lives and that it change their lives and by that change how they do their jobs. Oh, precious Holy Ghost, we'd ask you would just go everywhere, everywhere this morning, Lord, touching hearts, touching lives, helping people, giving them encouragement. Precious God, we lift them up to you, those that are crying out, crying out for you. And Lord, <clears throat> those who are filled with joy, those who have extra money, <clears throat> they have provision, they have many things that you could give away, clothes, all kinds of things you could give away. You could bless someone else. Please, Lord, help us to take the time to just do that, to just gather up some things and, and take them to a good place or, the, or to your church, if your church is doing something. Hand out some tracts, whatever, whatever, Lord. Help us all to find something that will be building your kingdom. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed today. Have a wonderful day in him. And know that I love you. Bye-bye.